to slideshow and jump, 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 jump. I'm going to jump to four things. I want to not talk about uh, kind of these things, but talk about the four major shifts, not in how we're cooking, but the global changes in how we're eating. And this is not the high income world that we're in, although the changes aren't so different. If you think of our food supply, 75% of the foods and beverages in the US have added sugar in them. And it's not so different looking at the ingredients from the UK and other countries in Europe. So the sweetening of the world's diet is quite amazing. If I were to show you the global pictures for beverage intake changes and for other food changes, it's amazing. The second is animal source food changes. I'll show you each of these. I won't go through the refined carbohydrates, but it comes out of the snacking. I'll give you some sense of some of the major drivers in low and middle income countries. And that's really what I want to focus on today. So you know we've loved sweetness. About 99% of us have a high preference for sweetness. Well, the difference is we all eat some added sugar in our diet, but this is a distribution from my country, the U.S. But if I went to Mexico, I took you to Chile, which is now the highest soft drink drinker and the consumer in the world. I took you around Latin America. I took you around Asia. The male distribution of sugar would look like that. These are the quintiles in different uh, years and how they've shifted over time in my country, where we have shifted away from soft drinks to diet beverages and now to water in our drinking patterns. And so the added sugar has gone down. But this is, if I took you to other countries in the world, most of the low and middle income world, it's going in the opposite direction, up, up, up. And I'm not going to go there. The second is something that's hard. If you were in 1930 or 40 or 1900, nobody snacked. Nobody in the globe. When I went to China in the 1980s to start doing national surveys, we spent three days in t thousands of households every couple years looking and what they ate, how they moved, drank, in very great detail. They didn't snack. All of a sudden, modern TV came in in 2000, modern marketing. The retail sector reached every village with a convenience store, and snacking has doubled, tripled. Every two years, we've gone along. So they're moving, and they move from healthy snacks to the same kind of wonderful junk food that we see in the stores in this country. And that is happening. A quarter of the calories in Brazil, Mexico, the US, a number of European countries where I've studied it, and other countries across the globe come from snacking. No snacking 40 years ago, an invented behavior. The food industry created a whole new eating behavior and multiplied it over the, so this is a very important thing to understand. It's not just that the industry has gotten us to eat more of certain things, they've gotten us to eat at new occasions and created new eating occasions and new demands. And don't say it's magic and we don't understand it. They understand it and they have done it and they're doing it now in every low and middle income country in Asia and Africa that they haven't reached before. The third thing is fatty foods. We understand fat and oil in our diet, but we do not eat one third the amount of fat and oil that Asia and Africa eat today and that Latin America consumes because it was a very cheap product which came on the market developed by the US and Chinese, Japanese scholars in the 50s and 60s to take oil from oil seeds. We created that technology. It spread in the West. We had our margarine, our vegetable oils, our trans fats, all of that created. But we only ate a little of it. But let's look at what's happening in the rest of the globe. And let's look at China. These are the grams per day in China. You know, there's about nine calories of fat, of calories in each of these grams of fat. Look in China over time. It keeps going up. And China has a third the oil consumption of Indonesia, Malaysia, India. This is what's happening in Asia. The same thing is happening in Africa because these vegetable oils are cheap, they're tasty. Pe China, we went from steaming, baking food and other really healthy methods in boiling to stir frying and now to deep frying. Over a third of the calories for 50% of the households are deep fried today. Changes like this are happening globally. 
So this is a third major thing happening in the low and middle income world. Quite dramatic. Uh, the fourth is animal foods. This is one we've talked about a lot. Now, if you notice on the right, those are Beijing, Chongqing, and, and Shanghai. Three small cities, each 30 million or more people, uh, each autonomous cities in China. You'll notice a fifth of a kilo per capita consumed by adults. Now, we'd like the world, we'd certainly want preschoolers to have animal food, but this is moving. And this is going up every year in the survey. It's going up, up, up as we move along in that country. And so this is the trajectory of China, India, other countries on animal source food, moving beyond what we would like to see, not to European levels and American levels, where we're consuming double, triple that, but certainly above where they were back even before we, if I went back to earlier parts of the survey, back when they consumed very little animal source food, it's only when they got rid of, created free, farm, free markets, got rid of quotas, that we moved to eating much animal food at all in the country. So this is the, the fourth major change. And these changes are really dynamic. I can't tell you between what people are eating there, if I went through how the drinking has changed from water to caloric beverages and how it's exploding from nothing in, a, in an upward cycle in every country I'm working in in Asia, every country in Latin America. Four of the top six countries for soft drinks are in South America and Central America today, just as an example. And then there's the juices, the commercial juices, no difference in soft drinks, same effect. So the speed of change and why is this change occurring? Because we've shifted from small farmers selling to middlemen all the way through to now four groups buying directly from farmers in Asian and increasingly in Africa and certainly in Latin America. It's the retailers. You heard about Paul Nestle. It's the global food companies directly. He has three quarters of a million farmers he buys directly from across the globe. And a lot are in Africa, an awful lot in Asia. It's the agribusinesses and the food service companies. Together, they are going to the farmers and telling them what to grow and working with them. And it's changed the whole nature of the food system. And the retail sector across Africa, Asia, and Latin America, you will not find a village where you can no longer, you could access chips, you can access junk food, uh, every place. It is an um, amazing revolution that's not just hit Asia, not just hit Laf Africa, Latin America, but now the poor weaning kids in, South, in Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, they're getting the same kind of junk food. So the implications for this kind of change, for what we're talking about, are really quite enormous. And we need to understand this. And we need to understand this processed food shift and this consumer packaged food shift which is taking over the low and middle income world as part of the whole complexity that we face versus the Michael Pollan who says, you know, eat plant food. Well, the world isn't doing it anymore. 60% of the calories in Mexico come from the consumer packaged foods. In China, it was 30% just a couple years after retailers, our last survey in 2011. I expect this year when we go back to each food, it'll be about 60% of calories. It's growing 50% a year in China, retail sales. Thank you very much.